morning. Welcome to Bristol Community Church. My name is Georgie Nicodemus, and I'm the director of family and children here at Bristol Community Church. Um, I've got a couple of announcements before we get started, but I want to let you know, okay, in your bulletin, there's a place for you to tear off. This is a communication slip. If you're here for the first time, uh, go ahead and fill that out. If you're just here, you know, you regularly come, fill it out, okay? When the offering plate comes by, put it in. So in case you didn't know, fill it out, okay? Fill it out, tear it off, put it in the offering plate. Um, next Saturday is Dinner Church. And if you've never been to Dinner Church, I'm inviting you. It's at 6 p.m. Uh, we come, we have dinner, and then we have table talk. And it's a community-based outreach. So not only do we eat, but we talk to people from the community. Uh, at table talk, we have points that we talk about. So it's not just conversation, it's pointed conversation. And we've had uh, really good success having people from the community come in. So like I said, uh, next Saturday, 6 p.m. Next Sunday, Witness Boldly, and we're going to have a guest speaker, our own Scott Troyer, from Time to Revive. So that's exciting. Scott's going to be here and share with us how we can witness boldly. Amen? Okay, let's go ahead and say the open road prayer together. If we could have it on the screen. God, please break through and open doors to new hopes and possibilities for our church and in our own lives. And we will surrender and faithfully follow Christ into the open road adventure of your new and unknown future. May your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Scott. Good morning, everyone. Let's all stand and sing, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. and greet those around you. Good morning. How are you? Morning. I don't know what you were reading, but I was trying to get your attention. I was, I was getting ready to make a donation. Why? Thank you. Get up there. But you can't count on me for nothing. Hey, it doesn't matter. I was talking to somebody, and that's why I didn't come up when I usually do. <laughs> I was making my Well, can I say into it without it being turned on? Could you hear me? As you make your way back, remain standing and let's sing, My Faith Looks Up to Thee.
happy the home where God is there. Good morning. Let's try that again. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Bristol Community Church. I'm Pastor Gary Lewis. Great to have you with us today. Um, we have uh, several uh, prayer requests in the bulletins this morning and several requests. I know it's on our hearts today. Uh, I wanted to begin uh, the, Tom Mellinger and the, and the family, um, Levi and Leslie, just wanted me to express to you their appreciation for all of your love and support. Uh, they truly do appreciate all that, that was done for them and through this, ter- through this awful time. And, and we had a great send-off yesterday, uh, and so uh, just continue to pray for them. Pray for them as they, uh, as they recover and, and uh, as they make adjustments. And, uh, and uh, I know that's going to be a, a tough time for Tom, and, but our church family is going to continue to love them and, 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 and continue to pray for them. So... Um, but they wanted me just to say thank you so much for the love and support. They truly, truly appreciate all the many ways you have reached out. I received word uh, on Friday, uh, Friday night that uh, Dave Spence tripped and fell and uh, broke an ankle that will require surgery. Uh, my understanding is he hasn't had surgery yet, but it will require surgery. So uh, pre- uh, please uh, pray for Brenda and the family. Um, their daughter Sue was scheduled to to, uh, to sing with us here this morning, and uh, she is ill and, and top of everything else. So pray for Sue as well. Also, uh, Judy Garber had extensive surgery this week, and uh, the doctors were very encouraged with what they found, and it, it went well. But she is still recovering from surgery, and so um, the church is putting together some meals to support them as she recovers. And there's a sign up out in the lobby, so please take a look at that, and if you can help us with some meals, that would be uh, greatly appreciated. Uh, there's other uh, needs in the bulletin this morning. Um, just wanted to, to, to lift these uh, particular ones up to you, and let us um, um, pray for Dennis Mann, uh, father of Brian, who was hospitalized earlier this week, so I want to keep praying for, for, for Dennis. Also, the, the residents of, of Florida, you know, for the hurricane, and... and um, all that's involved there, so we want to continue to, to pray for them. Of course, those in Hawaii, that, that long-term recovery for them and all the lives that were lost. Let us uh, uh, join our hearts in prayer as we pray today. Almighty gracious God, there is so much going on in the life of our church. And right now, Lord, I just want to pray for all those who are hurting all those who are grieving, 
all those who are anticipating medical tests, and surgeries and procedures, and all the caregivers in our, in our church family, for their loved ones, for those whom they are caring for, and, and for themselves. So many needs. And we come together today, Lord, turning to you because we know that you know our needs. You know the requests that have been lifted up and in the bulletin today, but also the request that's on our hearts. And you are especially tender toward those unspoken requests that exist and those needs that we share with you today. So Lord Jesus, come, up, come alongside us. Help us to know that you are present among us. Through the music we sing, through the, through the words we sing and hear, and, and through the word that's going to be preached today, Lord, we just pray for your guidance. Help us leave here a changed people because of this time together. And Lord, I just continue to pray for the family of Linda Mellinger and Lord, just continue to love on them and continue to strengthen them and may their bond continue to be strong for one another. Uh, we lift up Dave Spence as he is anticipating the surgery and, and for Brenda and now Sue who wants to help but who's ill and that entire family, Lord, we lift up to you. And Lord, we continue to pray for Judy Garber as she... Um, continues this fight against cancer and so encouraged with the, with, the, with the surgery. And so now, Lord, we pray for her recovery. We pray, Lord, that uh, she'll be able to recover from this procedure and, and uh, will be able to be strengthened and to resume, resume her, her treatments. And, Lord, we just come to you to this day thanking you for all your blessings, thanking you for your presence in our lives as we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You know, my, uh, I'm beginning a new sermon series today, and today we're going to be talking about uh, failing forward. And uh, Jeremy and Evan are starting a new gig. They're going, to be, they're going to be traveling around singing songs to the Lord, and this is their first stop at our 915 uh, worship service. And uh, the song that they've selected to share with you, I think, really has a pretty good tie-in uh, to our theme today. So um, would you give them a, a Bristol Community Church welcome as they prepare to share with us? We're going on the road, Evan. Yeah. 50 states tour. No, God, God put, us, um, put this song on our hearts um, with La Labor Day. It's called um, You've Already Won. And so let this song just minister to your hearts. But um, once, once you get the first verse, it's pretty much the same thing. So sing along if you, if you feel that. Peace that our last darkness 
Great job, guys. Thank you so very much. Phil, pull out your sermon outlines. We're, we don't have a PowerPoint today, so I have to take a look at your sermon outlines. We're starting a new sermon to, to, series today I'm calling, It's Never Too Late to Start Over. Now, I think that is the most favorite lie of the devil 
is to get you to believe that the messes we make in life freezes us forever into a cycle of regret and rejection. You know, you may know what I'm talking about. You, you've, you've, you have really messed up, messed up that relationship. It will never be restored. That was such a tragic mistake. You will never recover. The devil just whispers those messages into your head and, and it comes into your heart and you believe those. I stand here with the word of God and declare to you that is not true. It is never too late to start over. I want you to turn to your neighbor and say that to him. It is never too late to start over. Today I want us to look at how you deal with defeats. The facts are this. Everyone experiences failure in life. Life is never an unbroken series of victories. We all have setbacks, failures, defeats, losses. Nobody is perfect. No one bats 1,000. Sometimes a defeat can seem to overwhelm you. Sometimes we bring defeat on ourselves. Sometimes we, we did not bring it on ourselves, but sometimes we just feel overwhelmed. This is the way Job felt. Take a look at the top of your outlines. Job 17, 11 says this. My days have passed. My plans are shattered. Have you ever felt like that? My days are past. I am left behind. My plans are shattered. Maybe you felt like that this week. I realize that today as we talk about how do you rebound from a failure, some of you are sitting there saying, I, I don't need this message. Well, you better take notes. Because someday you will need this message. Everybody experiences defeats in life. Everybody has failures. You will fail many times in life, but you're never a failure until you give up. The book of Proverbs has a lot of insight into what causes failure. Five different things that cause failure in our life according to the book of Proverbs. Number one, we fail because we do not plan ahead. You probably remember the old saying, if you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. You have to plan. Proverbs 27, verse 12. It's the first one on your sermon outlines. Let's read this out loud together. The prudent see danger and take refuge, but the simple keep going and pay the penalty. In other words, a sensible man watches for problems ahead and prepares to meet them. The simple-minded man never looks and suffers the consequences. Are you simple-minded? Some of us have a tendency to be impulsive, yet the sens sensible man plans ahead. The impulsive person never looks ahead and suffers the consequences. We ought to make our plans counting on God to direct us. Now, one of the reasons we fail is we just do not plan. Was it raining when Noah built the ark? No. Rain hadn't even been invented yet. Right? It didn't happen. It did not rain for 120 years. That is what I call long-range planning. Jesus told the story about a man who built a building and before he finished, he had to give it up because he had not planned. We fail because we do not plan. Former Colts quarterback Peyton Manning says this about planning. Luck is when preparation meets opportunity. I like that. Luck is when preparation meets opportunity. Number two, we fail because we think we know it all. Proverbs says we fail when we think we know it all. We fail when we think we have it all together. You're you are never going to get anywhere if you think you're already there. Proverbs 16, 18 says this. Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. Pride and arrogance are a recipe for failure. Somebody said, the person who gets too big for his britches will be exposed in the end. I worked hard on that one. A lot of theological training in that one. 
When we think we have it all together, watch out. The Bible says pride causes us to fail. The average American always thinks he is above average. One of the symptoms of pride is we do not think we need any advice. I've got it all together. I do not need anybody. Jesus and me, we have a good thing going. I don't need anybody to tell me what it's all about. Kind of a a lone ranger Christian. Proverbs 15 verse 22 says this. Let's read this one out loud together. Plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors, they succeed. We fail because we do not plan ahead. We fail because we think we have arrived. Remember the lesson of the whale. Just about the time you get to the top and you are ready to blow, that is when you are harpooned. Watch out. Number three, we fail because we become risk adverse. When we, uh, when we are afraid to take risks, there is a, that is a sure sign that failure is near. Proverbs 29, verse 25 says this, Fear of man will prove to be a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. The moment you start to worry about what other people think, you are doomed. It's a trap. Fear of man is a snare, he says, and the fear of failure can be a cause of failure. NFL great Fran Tarkington said one time that fear sets you up to be a loser. Maybe I should wait. I'm afraid. You miss a golden opportunity. The greatest failure is the failure to try. When I die, I want four words written on my tombstone. At least he tried. For the glory of God, at least he tried. Fear. When we are afraid to take risks, You have to take risks. That is what brings abundance. That's what brings success in life. Don't be afraid to go out on a limb. That's where the fruit is. We are afraid to take risks. When we are afraid to take risks, we fail. Number four, we fail because we give up too soon. The trouble with many people that during trying times, they just stop trying. Failure is the path of least persistence. How many ball games are decided in the last seconds? I saw one against Purdue yesterday, all right? The last seconds. Keep on keeping on. Never give up. The Bible says, don't give up because we will eventually reap a harvest if we don't give up, if we don't grow weary. We give up too soon. Proverbs 12, 24 says this. Diligent hands will rule, but laziness ends in forced labor. If at first you don't succeed, you're normal. Try again. Many times success is right around the corner. You are never a failure until you quit. Thomas Edison tried 200 different elements before he found the right element to make the incandescent light bulb. He said, don't call it a failure, call it an education. I know 200 ways that didn't work. In his rookie season, former Colts quarterback Peyton Manning had 28 passes intercepted. It remains a record for rookie quarterbacks. He did not call it quits. He kept going. He kept improving. He became an all-pro. Listen to these quips. The value of a postage stamp is its ability to stick to one thing until it gets there. Aren't those some deep thoughts this morning? (laughs) A postage stamp. An oak tree is a little nut that refused to give its ground. Don't give up too soon. We fail because we do not plan ahead. We think we know it all. We become risk adverse. We give up too soon. And number five, we fail because we avoid God's guidance. This is the number one reason we fail. Proverbs 14, 12, it's the very bottom of your outlines. Let's read this out loud together. There is a way that appears to be right, but in the end it leads to death. God's word is filled with guidelines, principles, to make our life all God wants it to be and all that we want it to be. Most of the time, we want to listen to our feelings. I feel that this is the right thing to do, even if God's word says it differently. 
The fact is, God's word is usually the opposite of natural inclinations. God says the way to get is to give. The way to be honored is to be humbled. The way to greatness is to be a servant. All of the paradoxes of the Bible. Usually, you could take your natural inclination and figure out the opposite and figure that is God's will. God says, my ways are not your ways. They are higher than your ways. When we don't listen to God, we are in trouble. Lack of prayer causes a lot of failure. Regardless of the cause, we all fail. What do you do when you fail? How do you respond? God is more interested in your future than he is in your past. The Bible shows us how to fail forward. On the back of your outlines, number one, Embrace accountability for your own mistakes. The person who refuses to admit his mistake can never be successful. If you make a mistake, if you have failed, admit it. Say, I blew it. Say, I was wrong. Face up to it. Be honest with yourself. Be honest with others. It is our natural sin nature to pass the buck. Adam passed the buck and blamed his wife, and ever since then, we have passed the buck. Proverbs 28, 13 says this, Whoever conceals their sins does not prosper, but the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. In other words, gets another chance. Losers are pros at blaming other people. To blame is to be lame. When you are blaming others, you are being lame. Losers are are pros at shifting the blame. We blame the economy. We blame the weather. We blame fate. We blame luck. If you are a non-Christian, you blame astrology. You blame your parents. You blame your spouse. You blame the government. God says, if you want to start over, if you failed, just admit it. I do not know where we get the idea that we have to pretend that we are perfect. We are not. You are not perfect. Now say that to your neighbor. You are not perfect. And neither am I. And neither am I. In 1974, after an 88-game winning streak, UCLA basketball shocked the nation by losing. Does anyone remember who beat them? Notre Dame. I thought that might go well in this crowd. You might remember that. It's the last time they beat someone, but that's okay. Just kidding. Just kidding. Yeah, they, so the Notre Dame beat UCLA. They, they, UCLA lost in a game that they had been ahead by 11 points. The next day in the headlines, John Wooden, the coach, said, Blame me. That is a mark of a winner. He does not shift the responsibility. He said, we just got overconfident. Embrace accountability for your own mistakes. Number two, put it into your regrets and seek repentance. Put an end to your regrets and seek repentance. When you experience a major failure, you stop regretting and start repenting. The Greek word for repent means to change your mind, to look at it a different way, to change your direction, to change your heart. It means you change, you do something about it. 2 Corinthians 7 verse 10 says this. Let's read this out loud together. Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret, but worldly sorrow brings death. This means that the sadness that is used by God brings a change of heart that leads to salvation. There is no regret in that. Worldly sadness causes death. There are two kinds of sadness, godly sadness and worldly sadness. Godly sorrow, worldly sorrow. What's the difference? Godly sorrow motivates you to change. It brings a change of heart. 
It motivates you to do something. I'm going to change. I'm going to be different. I have learned my lesson. I'm going to learn from it. If you're going to fail, fail intelligently. Always learn from it. It motivates you to change. Worldly sorrow is demoralizing, depressing. It causes death. Poor me. One of the most devastating emotions in life life is self-pity. Poor me. I'm done. I'm just going to go eat worms. Sometimes it takes a painful situation to make us change our ways. Stop regretting. Regretting does not change anything. Repentance changes everything. Number three, leave the past behind and direct your attention to what lies ahead. Philippians Philippians 3, verses 13 and 14, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Forget what is behind and focus on what is ahead, Paul says. I press on. I do not let my defeats defeat me. What memory in your life are you allowing to continually manipulate you? Every time it comes up, you think, I wish I'd never done that. I regret that. You are being manipulated by it. Some of you are allowing your past to control your future, and that is a mistake. Your past is past. It is water under the bridge. You cannot change the past by worrying about it. Let it go and focus on the future. It is not so much where you have been, but what direction your feet are headed now that counts. I don't care what your failure is in life. You are not washed up until you choose to quit, unless you choose to give up, unless you choose to reject the grace of God. The choice is condemnation or confession. You you can either live in condemnation or you can confess, confess it and get on with life. Leave the past behind and direct your attention to what lies ahead. Number four, have faith that God will orchestrate a solution. Have you ever been to a concert with an orchestra? The first thing that happens is there's a period of time when everyone is warming up at exactly the same time. Anybody know what I'm talking about? There's a sound of chaos that lifts its way to the ceiling. And if they kept going, it would get ugly. It is when the leader stands before them and begins directing that the chaos becomes music. That is what God does in our life when we choose to commit our lives to the Lord. Romans 8.28 says this, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Everything that happens fits into a pattern. We look at the underside, and God is looking at the top side. From God's point of view, things are working for the good. There was a time in my life when I used to worry about the source of the problems that come into my life. Is this problem from the devil? Is this from other Christians? Is this problem from the Lord? Is this something I have brought unto myself. I have learned that that is a useless exercise. It doesn't matter where the problem came from. God will still use it. How does God take a negative and turn it into a positive? How does God take a minus in your life and turn it into a plus? He makes a cross out of it. God specializes in turning crucifixions into resurrections. This is why Jesus went to the cross. He did it so that we can become a new creation. Pray with me. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says this, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone 
the new is here. O Lord, help us to embrace the new creation, even though we may be feeling old and tired. We know through you that you see us with the new creation eyes. Help us to know that the old, the regrets of the past, the failures of the past, that they're, they're gone. And the new is here. The new is always before us. Would you pray a prayer like this in your heart? Would you just say, Jesus Christ, I don't understand it all, but I ask you to come into my heart. I really want to know you, Lord. This seems too good to be true, but, but I ask you to forgive me. Wipe out those painful regrets. Help me to focus on the, on the future, the goal, living for you. Lord, I want to believe that you can work all things for good, even the bad things in my life. Lord, somehow use them. Even the dumb choices that I've made, fit them into the pattern, I pray. Help me to stop regretting and do something about it. Help me not to, to give into a pity party and give up, but with your power to change. Help me to, help me to focus on the future. Help me to stop blaming other people or events, but just to trust you to work it all out. Would you pray this prayer? Just say, Jesus Christ, come into my life right now. Oh, Lord, I pray that as a people de de dedicated to you, that when we fail, that we would fail forward. We would always fail forward facing you. For we know that you're the one that can lead us away from the, from the pain and that you can lead us into a brighter future. We thank you for who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today is a Holy Communion Sunday, and so it's my honor and privilege to invite you to this simple meal. And what this meal represents is, is Jesus telling his disciples, I want you to remember these things. I want you to, to do this to remember me. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live at peace with one another. Friends, if you say yes to this invitation, this simple meal is open to you. You don't have to be a member of Bristol Community Church. All you have to do is say yes to the invitation to participate. Would you pray with me? Almighty and gracious God, Lord Jesus, we come to you this day seeking your forgiveness. Free us, Lord. Free us to, to serve you obediently. Free us from the sin that, 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 that weighs on us. Free us from the failures we've experienced in life and help us to learn more about you and to embrace you. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for what you've done for us. We ask for your forgiveness for, 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 for not being an obedient Christian, for not being an obedient church. And Lord Jesus, we thank you for your gift of forgiveness. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. On the night Jesus gave himself up for us, he took the bread, blessed it, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, blessed it, gave it to his disciples, and said, drink this, all of you, for this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins, drink this in remembrance of me. Pray with me. 
Almighty and gracious God, Lord Jesus, pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of the bread and the cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ as we endeavor to be your hands and feet in this place. We thank you for the opportunities we have to serve you in ministry here and in our communities. Oh, Lord Jesus, renew us with this simple meal so that we can be reminded of your presence with us in our lives, that you're always there with us, and that you're always there ministering to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As you come forward for communion this morning, we here at Bristol Community Church you have a couple of ways of participating. We just ask you to come forward and take a piece of the bread. You may dip the bread in this cup or you may drink the smaller cups that are on the, uh, the uh, communion rail here. You're welcome to come and, and kneel or stand and pray. The good news is this, the table is open and you're invited to come.
Would anyone like to be served in the pews? Now I ask the ushers to come forward for our tithes and offerings. Let us pray. Oh, my gracious God, we thank you for the wonderful gifts you have given us, and we thank you for these tithes and offerings. Lord Jesus, use them to do our work here at Bristol Community Church, to make disciples of Jesus Christ, who worship passionately, love extravagantly, and witness boldly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's all stand for a closing hymn, O Come and Dwell in Me.
And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen and amen. Thank you.